Oh, the marriage, marriage couples. Break the couples laugh for the Valentine's party. Sure. All right, we should be live here. Yeah, if you, if you share yours, then we should be rocking and rolling. And I might flip it. Do you do this weekly? Um, I'd like to. No, we do it pretty infrequently. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's kind of random. everyone and welcome to episode three oh, episode great. three yeah um of the pharmacy uh, my name is benjamin lee so i'm the managing director of comic cure and our mission at comic cure is support local comedians and local nonprofit organizations and in line with that we've got this show called the pharmacy where we speak with local comedians about causes that are important to them oh cool, cool. so uh today we have chris priester the teacher yes yes very well said very well good job glad to be here um wow the pharmacy so i say our motto is at comic here if laughter is the best medicine then we are the pharmacy oh wow that's where that comes from well i'm your pusher baby exactly you're all right you're, you're, you're i always want to be a drug yeah, dealer yeah. but i'm a teacher nowhere near that <laughs> yeah you know, but that's this is the closest I can to being the, a pusher. Yeah, exactly. I'm gonna push these jokes. I got it. I um, got it. So tell us a little bit about yourself. How yeah. how long you been doing comedy? Uh, two and a half years. It'll be three years coming up soon. I want to say May. It'll be three years. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Been a clown my whole life. I'm 46. <laughs> I was voted most funniest at my high school at Northeast High School, class of '89. I integrated high schools in Brown County. Uh, so even they thought I was funny you, back then. You, you, know? integ you integrated the high school? Yeah. Integration started in Brown County from 73 to 83. A lot of people don't realize that. Wow. So I got put on the bus for elementary school, not middle school. I went with the brothers for middle school and then high school. Okay. So, yeah. So I was voted most wittiest there. So I was uh -huh. funny there and I put my skills on hold for about 28 years. Okay. And um, you've been in training. Yeah, there you go. There you go. And believe it or not, how I got started, I was harassing some Girl Scouts. At um, I went to church. I'd never go, but I went. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. And the Girl Scouts, I was harassing them. They were trying to push some cookies on me. Yeah. And like I harassed good at them. That. Yeah. And 
10 feet away was Ricky Smiley, okay. the comedian. He yeah. was there visiting and he came over to me and my wife and he was like, dude, you're funny. You should give it a try. Go to the improv, give it a go. And been doing it ever since. I got up there that one time and can't wait to get up on stage all the time. So what was it like getting up your first time? It's a room full of strangers? Yes. And it's very different. So so stage comedy, stand-up mm -hmm, comedy is very mm -hmm. different than conversational. Yes, very like much being so. In a classroom. Um, being a student of comedy, you know, watching all the greats my whole life, watching comedy shows, Def Jam, all that. So I knew if I ever did it, what I wanted to be. Uh, and I was a natural storyteller by being a teacher. I got to teach every day to tell people things. Yeah. So I was a natural storyteller. So the good thing about that brief conversation with Ricky Smiley, he was like, listen, your name's Chris Priester and you're a teacher. He said, I want you to go up there. <coughs> Excuse me. Say my name's Chris Priester, the teacher. I'm not a comedian. I'm a teacher. And they want to hear what this big guy has to say about teaching elementary school. Right. Because at the time, I was teaching first grade. So I'm a 6'5 brother teaching first grade. So that's, mm -hmm. that's humorous in itself. Right. Mm -hmm. And so what, what, what level were you teaching? Um, first grade, we, okay, elementary education is every subject. Yeah. So my right. degree says I got to teach you reading, math. If you remember your elementary teacher, they taught you everything. Part of the day is reading, then math, then social studies, then science. Uh -huh. So we had to cover everything. But everything I did, I I was always joking. I kept it humorous. Right. I think kids want to learn from a guy that makes them laugh as opposed to some mean, angry person like I was taught. Right. It's. Uh, I was just quoting that quote about it's not about what you say it's about how you make them feel yes yes yeah. i agree so. i agree with that that has some merit to it but now nowadays if you're too nice to just oof, run you right over right, right even at my size they know i can't touch them so so what was your favorite subject in school i was a math like, guy i was always that. good with numbers you know i think that comes from the neighborhood, as I like to say. Mom gives you five bucks, tell you to go to, <laughs> to the corner store. I know where this is going. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, bring me my change. I need the exact change. So uh -huh. you learn at an early age yeah. how to bring mama's change back. Or, so, yeah. or you're going to get beat. And, or you take it and you double it. Or there you it. go. There yeah, you yeah. go. Look at you. I don't know man. if you were one of those guys. My, no. my brother was one of those guys. There you go. Look at you. Yeah. Got a little neighborhood in you. I knew it. I knew it a little bit. That's why I like you. Uh-huh. Um, so very in line with what we're going to talk about today, what's important mm -hmm. to you mm -hmm. is um, parenting. Oh, God. And I guess early childhood education, and yes. upbringing, things like that. Um, so mm -hmm. let's talk a little bit about your upbringing and your parents. Well, um, I had a good childhood. Mm -hmm. So, you know, two-parent home. Uh, my parents came out of the civil rights movement. They were from the rural south, but they moved to South Florida in the 50s. So. Okay. I barely made it. I um, my parents had me when they were forty one, so my mom's eighty six now. I'm forty six. So there's your math there. Uh -huh. So yeah, I barely made the cut. So um, they came. I had a sister, just me and my sister, older sister. So very traditional household. I would consider us middle class. They worked. Um, you know, we had two cars. Both of us had the same last name. That was rare right. in my neighborhood. So that was good. So, I lived in the neighborhood, but I didn't feel like it. It was middle class. Everybody worked. So, I had good upbringing. So, I went to, um, like I said, I integrated at school. So, I got bus to Lloyd State Elementary. Then I went to college, Florida A&M University. My wife, I mean, my sister, went to Florida State. So, now I'm married. Hi, Cormac. My wife's a principal, Brock County Public Schools. I'm a teacher at a charter school, and my oldest son graduated from private school. So, we think it's all jacked up. Right. Yeah, it's all jacked <laughs> up. Uh, so we have a 22-year-old and a 7-year-old. Yeah. So good stuff. I'm a happy guy. So I'm trying to emulate my parents. I was, I was the surprise. Yeah, you were I the surprise. A, well, my 7-year-old. the youngest of four. <clears throat> my 7-year-old was yeah. going to be, I mean, my 22-year-old, we were going to be one and done. Happy, but 7-year-old, woo, surprise. I'm 46, so that's big in the neighborhood to have one, you know, after 38. <laughs> right, right. Um, yeah. Now, you know what good parenting is like. Oh God, yes. Because you, you, you were raised in a in a great yes, you know, and I've two parent system. And then you get to see 
parenting on a day-to-day -day basis. Like I get, I get to see it in elementary school. I got to see it in the charter world, public world. My wife sees it. Then I got to see it in private world with my son too. So mm -hmm. I always, I'm hard on parents because I believe school doesn't change. Uh, two plus two is four. Right. Wherever you at, whether you at a private charter. So what happens after school? From three o'clock to that kid gets back to me at seven thirty in the morning. That's where things get different. Mm -hmm. And I believe parenting doesn't get the credit that it should get because um, I don't want to get in trouble because I'm a good guy and Ben's a good guy. <laughs> but I don't care if you're rich or poor. Parenting has no parameters with money. Just because you got money doesn't mean you're a good parent. Because mm -hmm. I saw it in the private world. Um, kids that supposedly have everything, you know, they got money. They, got, they those kids are pretty jacked up too, mm -hmm. because maybe because they got money to get into bigger trouble, right? You know, so or they don't know the value of the dollar. They don't know the value of the dollar yeah. because they they get it, and it, because you know, in the neighborhood, the worst thing you might get, you might get a little drinking, you might get a little five dollar joint because three guys chipped in to do it. Mm -hmm. Out. Woo! The rich kids were woo. Right. Yeah, we were getting into. See, yeah, my son yeah, used to see yeah. some stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah he used I mean, to see I'm from stuff. I'm from a pretty affluent neighborhood outside. <coughs> yeah, of yeah. Philadelphia. You've yeah. seen. Oh, all right, you've I've, seen. I've it. seen it. Yes, yeah. sir. You've Absolutely. seen it. So, so, I um, you know, so they got money to get out of problems. You know, mm -hmm. uh, something happens to a kid in my neighborhood. Something happens to my son. Prime example: My son's in college right now. If he messes up in college. I'm a teacher. The best I can do is ask my principal if he can be the security guard. Right. $10 an hour. Mm -hmm. My rich friends, if their kid did the same thing, you might come home and work for dad. You know, you might get into some company because of dad's relationship. So, you know, I think there's a dynamic. You know, a lot of people like to pound on other races or ethnicities and saying, oh, they're bad parents, they're bad people. But I get to see it. I'm on the front line, so I get to see it every day. Yeah. yeah and how, where you live and yeah. who your parents are it's, have a lot to do with things it, and what your last name is. Right. And it's it's something that a kid can't really do much about. No. Right? No, it's sad. And, and um, I work in North Lauderdale, so even even now with, with uh, the DACA, stuff and the immigration stuff I, I I can admit it I teach illegals okay so even they at six seven eight nine years old they're dealing with immigration stuff yeah <clears throat> and I personally don't think that's something a baby needs to deal with they should be dealing with one two threes ABC's one two threes right and, and we're dealing with are my parents gonna be here when I get home yeah that's something that I didn't have to deal with now my parents you might have had to deal with it in the 50s and 40s in the civil rights movement, but so my heart goes out to those kids, mm -hmm. you know, when There's I see similarities that. similarities there. Yeah, I see some. I mean, mm -hmm. real real life. This happened in Broward County two weeks ago. Um, one of my kids, his dad is a um, lawn guy. They, they picked him up right. at 7 Eleven. That kid doesn't oh, have his dad. 7 Eleven uh, yeah. raids. Yeah, they raided him there. So yeah. I'm a big proponent of parents being involved doing their thing and, and that that makes the kid better I don't care what level you're at so as a as a teacher you have a platform obviously mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. there's a bridge there yes how, how do you talk to the parents about <clears throat> you know ways that that they can improve yeah me, me being you know, I don't, uh, know, if, I don't mm -hmm. know if believe it or not some parents probably say that's not your job to tell me yeah anything, but so. believe it or not being a male in elementary school and uh, I I take pride in that. Even when I was in college, all my buddies that were male teachers were in secondary education because they wanted to coach or do whatever. I I knew I liked the party. I just tell the truth. And I know regardless of how hungover I am, I still knew what two plus two is the next morning. So I like the elementary world where it's easier on the brain. Right. So, uh, and, um, and, okay, I can, I can be transparent because I'm with Benjamin. And plus, I knew that's where all the young girls were. The hot chicks were in college. They majored in elementary ed. That's so I was the only guy there. Mm -hmm. So that was pretty cool. So now as a teacher, I'm the only male. So I know a lot of my moms lean on me. Um, 
because I have a lot of single moms. So they ask for advice, believe it or not. What can I do to make him better? What can I do? So I give, I've actually made whole schedules for parents. Or, you know what, he's pretty active. Maybe we can find a little league to put him in to keep him busy. I know the coaches there, they're good male role models. Mm -hmm. I know this good after school program. I know you're busy. They'll help him with his homework. They have tutoring, things of that sort that push kids in the right direction because my whole life, other than teaching and comedy, is, I mean, that's all I do. Mm -hmm. I'm coaching if I'm not. I used to referee, so I'm always around kids and their development. So I believe in um, what I call character building programs for kids. Mm -hmm. Like you and I had, you're not that much younger than me, but we had Boy Scouts. We had coaches who really wanted to coach us and, and make sure we became better human beings. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something we're lacking now. And uh, I think we're gonna get back to it. People like me, people like you, Comic Cure, we're gonna get get America back yeah. to to being good parents and raising good kids where it's not about you know, my neighbor could say something to me if if I was if I was messing up in the street. If they heard me walking up the side where using bad language or, or being a bad guy, they could call my mom yeah. and say, Hey, I uh -huh. saw Chris, I saw Benjamin community misbehaving today. Parenting. Yeah. Community parenting. And mm -hmm. then now we barely even know our neighbors. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't. I'm. I, and I live in Inver. I live in a pretty nice neighborhood, and I'm sitting here thinking I really don't know my neighbors yeah. like that. It was, well, the rise of the vertical cities, right? There you go. If yeah. something went down today, right now, mm -hmm. I don't think I, I have a neighbor that could call me and say, "Hey, Chris, yeah. somebody is breaking in your house or whatever." Yeah. We we've lost the sense of community and right. talking to each the other. Village. Yeah, the village fences we, and, and yeah. concrete. Yeah. yeah, I don't like you. I don't like you. You know, mm -hmm. you pray for your own house. You don't even pray for the community anymore. Right. Bless us four and no more. Yeah. That's what some people do. But that's a whole other story. Yeah. Um, so, do you think you uh, in the in the teaching world? Mm -hmm. Do you think you're an exception to the rule, or for for the, for the most part, all teachers? Are looking out for all their all their students and, and kind of have the same approach you do. Mm, are you the exception? I hate to say it. <sighs> okay, I don't, don't want to get in trouble. Don't say it. It'll be nice. <laughs> okay, I can. You got to go right. to work tomorrow. Oh, it's gonna be <laughs> yeah, my principal. That's my buddy. We 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 went to college together. With my, uh, uh, okay, without offending anyone, and I know everyone loves kids, wants to help. A lot of problems, there's what I call a social disconnect between the teacher and the student, mm -hmm. okay? It's hard for me. I can't sell BMWs if all I know is Mercedes. Right. Okay? Yeah, yeah, I know yeah. all about Mercedes, I got you. but I work at a BMW yeah, deal. Yeah. Um, if you're a nice gal that just moved down from upstate New York, you just got your degree, Oh, I'm going to come down to South Florida and teach. It's mm -hmm. beautiful weather there. Mm -hmm. I think I'm going to start my career here. And then you got a class full of kids that you've never been around you before. You can't connect with, yeah. You can't connect. I, mm -hmm. I mean, I almost feel like a hip-hop translator for some of my teachers. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. Oh, God, Chris, John Quavius came to class with one sock down and one up. Is he in a game? <laughs> No, it's, it's the latest rap video some guy did it. He's just emulating some dude. Uh -huh. But it goes right to some. If, mm -hmm. if I see it, I know teachers, God bless them, they, they should be working at the Salvation Army. Because it's just, oh, he, he's so cute. Oh, he's so cute. I feel so bad for him. Well, you hear the teacher, unfortunately. Um. We have counselors if the kid is, that's not your job. Yeah, it's not your job, right? Teach. Please teach. If you're a teacher, teach the children. We can't keep making excuses for what goes, that should be his safe haven from 8 a.m. Mm -hmm. to 2. You're there to teach them reading, writing, arithmetic. All this other stuff, you can't be the parent to. If you want to adopt, try your best, but I haven't seen any do it. 
What are your biggest <coughs> frustrations or challenges in the in the classroom? Uh, right now, it's discipline. It, it's just it's not the way it used to be. I just hate to say it. Um, what and that's a society it? issue. That has no political bearing, no race thing. That is a society issue. Mm-hmm. I tell people. When I was in elementary, at that integrated elementary school, right here in Brown County, Fort Lauderdale, Lord Estates, there was somebody walking around with that paddle that gave everyone the fear that if I messed up. Some corporal punishment. Yes. If you went to Catholic school, there was some little nun there with that ruler that struck fear in the children's hearts. So everyone was there to learn. They were there to do something. Right. Now... Mm -hmm. Um. No, if I say something to the kid, yeah. mom might come out the next right. day and challenge me. Mm-hmm. I might get a meeting with the principal because I said something to a child. Mm-hmm. Uh, kids, I won't say kids. Are, and again, we're back to the adults again. Right. It's not the kids. Kids are still cruel. Oh, they're still talking about each other. We did that when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. We we put other kids down, but. For the most part, we knew who the crazy kids were because they did not care about adult discipline. Guys like me and you that got the adult discipline early, it changed us. Right. The kids who could take the adult punishment early, they ended up kind of crazy. We knew they were going to be there anyway. <laughs> but these th- these kids now, they have no... No fear. Right, no fear. Of adult authority. No, no boundaries. No, none, yeah. none. I mean, they can say what they want. Mm. They know they can get away with it. Um, so how do you overcome that? I you got you to be creative and Yeah, I'm just their at attention. the raising my hands like... <sighs> That's why this comedy thing's got to work, Benjamin. Because, <laughs> yeah. I mean... I show up every day. <laughs> this is why and you're doing like, the comedy. Yeah, this is exactly why I'm doing it. Because <laughs> it's therapy. It's for therapy, to exactly. Deal with because <clears throat> it, it, they're both similar. When I'm, when I'm telling a joke, I'm in front of a stage, I'm giving them a story, I have an audience. Hopefully, when I finish, they will understand what I just told them. Okay? They'll comprehend. Nothing worse. Then tell it a joke, and they don't comprehend. Right. Nothing worse <laughs> just... than standing at that board. Mm-hmm. Do you understand what I'm saying? Do you, yeah. Test time come. Yeah, nothing. No clue. No absorption. <clears throat> I can't stand it. I, that, that, and I think that's what's driving me nuts. You don't have the parental support. You don't have the structure. Mm-hmm. You don't have the character building program. Hell, these kids go to the Boys and Girls Club. They learn how to shoot pool. Right. I go to a Boys and Girls Club in the neighborhood. Seven-year-olds with a pool stick over their head. So what are you training them to be, America? A hustler. Right. I can't fight that. Because he's shooting pool from 3 o'clock to 9. Then he comes back to me. Not doing homework. Not doing homework. Yeah. Not studying, not reading no the projects, book. Projects, exactly. Nothing. Yeah. But other kids, other areas, structure. And again, it does. I and we we. I love the two parent home. I do. But I see some single moms. I'm not gonna. Be, I see some single moms. I applaud you. Mm-hmm. I know a lot that are doing amazing. Okay. Um, because they they want better for their kids. And at right. the end of the day, you just can't drop them off to me and just say, hey, Mr. Priest, I'll see you later. Um, because if if we're that, if you're that parent who we never can contact, oh, we don't care. Whatever happens to that kid happens. Right. I mean, I'm just being transparent, it's, America. Yeah, Whatever happens, happens. Parents, if a teacher, if you haven't heard from your teacher, or if you don't pick up the phone to call that teacher, we're going to assume you're not interested. And I don't care if you're a private, public, or charter. If you don't pick up that phone and say, hey, Mr. Priester, how's John doing? If you don't go, if I know you never go online and look at your kids' grades, I don't 
care. Mm -hmm. I'm already stressed. Mm -hmm. The fewer parents I have to deal with, the better. I taught in the suburbs one year. I got to share this man. All rich parents, you know, teaching the advanced children. Uh, so what happens? Open house comes. Uh -huh. Dude, I had to get chairs from the other room. <laughs> they all show Because up. open house for me in the hood is usually yeah. just another night at school. I might right. get one or two. <clears throat> I had grandparents, aunts. <laughs> Because they wanted to know who the big black guy was that was teaching their kids. Seriously. Oh, they came for you. They came for me. <laughs> Not for their kids. They're asking questions. <laughs> they wanted to know my credentials because I taught science, sixth grade science. Uh -huh. So I screwed them up that day. I came with my shirt and towel with a lab coat. Like I really was, <laughs> like I really knew what I was doing. Uh -huh. And um, they, they, they were very impressed. Oh, I was ready. I had my good diction that day. But my God. <laughs> That was the worst year of my life because they expected me to do my job. I ran back to elementary school after that, by the way. But, yeah, it, I mean, <laughs> we would have a test on Friday. Yeah. Friday night, I'm getting a call. Well, Mr. Priester, I'm online, <laughs> and uh, I don't see Johnny's grade in. I was like, honey, you won't see it next Friday either. I'm not grading <laughs> it that fast. But they kept me on my toes saying, uh -huh. oh, my God, the parent involvement. And I got a lot of gifts for Christmas. <laughs> I never, <laughs> ah! I never get you. I never thought about that. You got, I got so many gifts that year. Uh -huh. That was amazing. Gift cards, everything. Do you, uh, do you, do you talk about that in your comedy? I'm writing a joke, a joke about, about that. that. I just yeah. thought about that just now. Talking about it, I never. I, I, I'm writing a joke about uh -huh. it. Yeah, I got. Wow, that was a great year. They wanted me to work, but they did reward me. What state was this? Was this it was Florida. Florida. Oh. Yeah, I've never lived anywhere else. God no. I went to school in Tallahassee. I visited everywhere. I've been everywhere. California. It's just... Mm -hmm. Give me South Florida. Who's your, who your favorite teacher? Um, Miss Anderson, my fourth grade teacher. Lord of State Elementary. Um, that's when I discovered hormones. <laughs> I'm sorry. Your own or others? Mine. I... I <laughs> Very beautiful woman, Miss Anderson was. God bless her. I don't even know if she's alive or anything, but I, I had perfect attendance that year. <laughs> I, I teacher's pet. Um, again, whatever it takes. She was good looking lady. I love that woman. I, I was I was there every day for her, and um, you know, and it, did it work? Did you learn a lot in her class? I mean, I like, passed, you know, it was fourth really? grade. I mean, I got, you know, I was on a roll guy. I was, right. I was a pretty bright yeah, guy. Yeah. I was always sharp because why? <laughs> I had expectations in my house. Mm -hmm. And I had an older sister who screwed up and ended up being like salutatorian at Fort Lauderdale uh, High. So I had uh, that, all the that, pressure. That oh, it. my God. Yeah. That was hard. Um, what, who, was there someone that really did inspire you to get into education? Oh, my family, everybody. I mean, Everyone aunts, in your family uncles, is in edu education. Yeah, they were assistant okay. principals, principals. So right. we, we, we so took it seriously. DNA. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean, I got, I got a cousin that I never met. He's got a statue in front of South Carolina State University. He was, he was killed in a civil rights sit-in. So, my parents, they they take education seriously. I. I I mean, I do it with my seven-year-old. He's in first grade, but I mean, he's got to read to me. He's got to—he's already doing multiplication. I mean, we're the expectations are high because we know. Well, I know, mm -hmm. and I'm going to tell you, America, that parents are the first teachers. That you can, you can put it on your teaching all day. Listen, I'm going to tell you, fifty-fifty. If your kid gets a good teacher, all right, just flip the coin. Yeah. If you get a good teacher. Hug them, embrace them, that your child had a good teacher for one year. Because mm -hmm. it's getting very hard. Mm -hmm. People are leaving the profession. Absolutely. Um, it's so deprioritized. Yeah, and the yeah. quality, then we go back to socioeconomic, it depends on where you live. I, I tell people every day, I can, I can go to an A, I can take the staff at an F school and take them to the A school, and that school's still going to be an A. Mm -hmm. The A staff come to the F school, it's still gonna be an F because it didn't change. No, you can change the teachers. That 
Got to change the dynamics, the yep. parents, the, the culture. The, the culture. Community of the culture. Yeah. That's what my wife's going through right now. She's uh -huh. at a first year at a, a, a tough elementary school. Change the culture. But with a husband like me, it's going to get done. We've already done parent involvement things and parent universities and things mm -hmm. where we're bringing parents in that they've never seen before. Yeah. We had a daddy day. You know, things like that that aren't the norm. Mm hmm you know, because um, a lot of kids don't get to see that early. And I, I tell all my friends that coach, you might be the only man in that kid's life. So if you say you're not playing this week if you got a bad report card, or you're not playing if you don't do your homework, or I'm going to call your teacher, mm -hmm. that, that, that means a lot to a kid, knowing that they have that male. I'm a male influence guy. Mm -hmm. So I... I if you don't have a dad in the house, or even if you co-parent, a lot of that going on too. Parents, if you're co-parenting, please uh, save your hatred for your ex on the phone. Don't yeah. do it in front we of the kid, okay? It, so. Yeah, I, I I saw it last week. I mean, I'm getting out, getting ready for school. Uh, I guess dad and mom were exchanging the kid in the parking lot. Full-blown cursing match, 7.30 in the morning. How do you think that seven-year-old's day gonna be? Mm -hmm. So you co-parents, please do not use your kid as pawns against the ex, because you're trying to get back out. Not good. That's yeah. not cool. Or just flat out, don't let them <coughs> witness. Yeah. Don't let them witness Bad it. Behavior. I mean, yes. Yeah. Period. I, to this day, my 22-year-old, as much as I go on stage and say bad words sometimes. He can tell you he hasn't heard me curse much in front of him. Mm -hmm. My seven-year-old, not in front of him. They're not going to say, Dad, as a little fun at night, a little tipsy, not in front of them. Mm -hmm. They're not going to say, I learned it from Dad. Right. Might have learned it on TV. Might have learned it somewhere else. Might have assumed Dad, mm -hmm. but you did not see Dad do it. That I believe in that. Mm -hmm. So the product of your parenting, what's your 22-year-old into? Um... He's square. Uh, uh, he's a techie. Um, I sent him to school to get degrees. He came back healthy. Uh, came back over the Christmas break reading labels. He's, <laughs> oh, he's a Presbyterian. <laughs> no, that's a religion. Veg vegetarian. No, the chicken and fish guy. Pescatarian. Pescatarian, just fish. Yeah, yeah fish. Yeah. No. Pes the, you know. <laughs> He's made up something. It's fish and chicken. <laughs> I know it's fish chicken and chicken and, chicken and no, a bunch no, of veggies. No, no, no beef. He doesn't fry. Okay, that's great. Yeah, I had to get him out over the Christmas break. I mean, Jesus, he's... <laughs> I went to the store. <laughs> oh, Dad, could you get me some asparagus? It's nature's cleanser. <laughs> I got a cleanser. <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> mm. Asparagus is not in my budget. Can you fry it? <laughs> yeah, uh, but... Can we Battery. He's reading his right. brother. Oh, <coughs> Dad, <laughs> Capri Sun has so much fructose in it. I said, dude, that same fructose got you to college. <laughs> yeah, you are on a student on fructose. Same stuff. Lunchables, high C, Capri Sun, it was good enough for you. Now it's not good enough for your brother, but that's okay. Yeah, but I had to run him back out of here. Yeah, he had to go. He had to go. But I love him. Great kid. His roommate say he's the designated driver. He doesn't drink or smoke. That's amazing. I told him they ain't got a lot of me, but <laughs> yeah, they say that's the truth. They, so, they don't do it. Is, is he at A&M? No, no, actually. Oh, it, now this is a real joke. Uh -huh. I tell the truth. He's in Tallahassee. He would die. That means he's in Tallahassee Community College. Oh. He gets his AA, and then we're going to family or Florida State. See, I learned that from my rich white friends. See, when you say, hey, where did the kid go to school? Oh, he's in Gainesville. That means <laughs> a, a Santa Fe Community College. Because if you're at University of Florida, you just say, I'm at University yeah. of Florida. Uh -huh. Oh, I'm in Gainesville. <laughs> oh, he's in Tallahassee. Oh, he's at TCC. <laughs> just say TCC. It's all good. Uh -huh. I can afford community exactly. college. Exactly. Yeah, awesome. he actually went He went to college to play football briefly. And that, that he was at Florida Tech. Uh -huh. Up in Melbourne, we thought he could play football and be an engineer at the same time. No. Ooh, that didn't work. <laughs> ooh, ooh, no. That mm -hmm. whoa, 
Woo! Yeah, that didn't work at all. That's why we're at TCC. I was like, dude, let's just start over. Let's just act like this transcript didn't happen. Let's just start over. You're young. But he's got the STEM interest like like you had in the math. And yeah, the he's guy. big math. I mean, in high school, he, he took geometry in um, middle school. So ninth grade, he was, what, honors algebra two. Then he went in the, that, Tr- trig, and, yeah, yeah, trig. he was messed up, oh, man. man. He took statistics his last year, and I was For like, fun. "Well, yeah." <laughs> he didn't have to take that. I was like, "What is this? What?" When they start putting letters up there, I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. Numbers. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, "Whoa!" But he's very bright. I'm proud of him. He's a techie. He's a, he's gonna be an entrepreneur. I don't uh-huh. think he, he's not gonna work for anybody. Quiet guy. He's, Definitely not like that. I talked too much for him when he was a child. That was my fault. <laughs> that was another thing. I was that dad when you like, if you came up to him and say, hey, little guy, what's your name? I just say, hey, his <laughs> name's Devon. I just jumped right in. I right. wouldn't even let him talk. Right. God, terrible. Learn that parent. Let your kid talk. Not express themselves. Mm-hmm. They're not old enough to express themselves. But let them talk. Mm-hmm. Fair enough. Did you watch the Cosby show going up? Yes, that was one of my heroes. Uh, mm-hmm. I thought, I thought it was fiction in, initially. You know, huh. a doctor and a lawyer, black doctor. <laughs> it was like fiction. I was more um, different strokeish. Okay. I wanted to be Arnold and Willis. I, 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 I wanted Mr. Drummond to come rescue me. I thought a rich white guy was going to come save me and put me in a penthouse. And it's similar to this right now, guys. We are almost in a penthouse. <laughs> we are. Benjamin could be my <laughs> Mr. Drummond. Don't know. I've been I think looking it's the for, other way around. Oh, stop it. <laughs> I've been looking for Mr. Drummond for about 40 years now. Um, but, yeah, I would want to be. You met Willis. him briefly when you had that teaching. Story. Yes, yes. I love <laughs> oh, God. I, I like Willis Arnold and Webster. I wanted to be those guys. Uh-huh. The rich white guy. Penthouse. Big yeah. guy. God. I love those shows. God. Yeah, we don't. There we go again. See, society. I don't have a family show. Right. I, see, those are what we call family shows. That mm-hmm. means I can bring out everybody in the house, from the baby to mom, to watch, to gather for some family time, mm-hmm. to watch a show. Love and hip hop. This is not a family show. I can't watch anything with the whole family. Do we have one family show in America? Ask yourself that today. Is there one show? I wouldn't know. I'm not in the demographic. Yeah, I don't think one show that the whole family could come out and watch. Yeah. America's Got Talent, some of these. Like, yeah, some, uh, something like that, maybe. Some ABC yeah. Family shows or something. That's about it. On there. Yeah, that's about it. Pretty yeah. sad. Pretty but sad. Nothing America. on like, the major networks or anything mm-mm, like that. Mm-mm. I got to finally. I, uh, Met Felicia Rashad about three weeks ago. Oh wow! And I had to go up to her and I like hooked her and I go, "You're real." You, oh you, geez. you lived it. You lived in my house in a box in my house. For, Amazing. That brought us together, man. Yeah, brought us together. It was unbelievable. That was a great night of TV, man. Yeah, it was. We're done, America. We can't watch those Skype shows anymore. Yeah. Now we got to watch. What's up, America. <clears throat> yeah, we love hip hop. More guys, more teachers Power. like Chris. Um, so you talk a lot about this stuff in your comedy. We've got oh, a God, show yeah. coming up this Yes! Sunday. Can't wait. Oh! <laughs> Florida's Funniest Parents. Meisner Park. Tickets are going fast. If you do want to come to the show, uh, <coughs> tickets are going fast. Chris is right. Make sure you go to MeisnerParkComedyClub.com. Saturday night in Boca Raton. 8 o'clock show. Make sure you use Chris's, uh, use the name Chris when mm-hmm. purchasing tickets and um, you get a discount. Um, it's going to be yeah, amazing. It's, it's, you're going to talk a lot about this stuff. Oh my your, God, yes. Yeah. And it's, it's Black History Month. That's I'm cool. coming to Boca Raton. <laughs> That's awesome. I just felt the light come yeah. down on me. I'm in Boca Raton, people, the, for Black History Month. Yeah, the black population just increased by boom. Just doubled. <laughs> it's like, my God, there's two of us here now. <laughs> yeah. Woo! This is oh, this is MAGA right now. MAGA is coming together. <laughs> Look at oh, I'm so excited. I can't wait to Saturday. It's gonna be good stuff. So you're on the lineup with Angela Naka, yes, who is a fu- uh, uh, a finalist in Florida's Funniest Female. Lisa Correo, Ooh. 
who has been doing it for years, also a teacher. Mm, can't wait. And uh, headlined by Mike Hurley. Oh, have you funny done? folks. And no, I've heard him. Yeah, heard he's awesome. funny. Hey, I hey, love it. Cannot wait. Cannot wait, guys. I can't wait to see you guys. Uh, we're going to be there. I'm going to be on time because I'm coming to Boca Raton. <laughs> this, this is... Yeah, the shows start early. They start early <laughs> in Boca <laughs> Raton. Raton. Go to yeah. Miami, you got to wait 45 minutes. Yes. <laughs> Boca, they start on time. People early have bird. to. Yeah. yeah, early bird means something here. Yeah. Usually we do these shows in the daytime so people can get home <laughs> yeah, before dark, right. but most of the people can walk. Mine's the park. Yeah, very get convenient. Here. Right downtown. Parking yeah. is at a premium here, so do the Uber, the Lyft. Um, yes. Also, there's a new service in the downtown Boca area called. Round the town. It's a free shuttle. Mm. Um, you can call them up. Um, we'll post the number. Um, Florida's Funniest Parents. You so check my, out the Facebook mm. event. You can get all the details there. MeisterParkComedyClub.com. If you heard him say Uber or Lyft, guys, that means no city bus. <laughs> there is a city bus. Oh! <laughs> Yeah, there is racially profiling. There's, there's, there's public transportation, transportation in Boca Raton. Exactly. Wow, exactly. Yeah. learn something new. <laughs> um, so yeah, so we hope to see you come out, see Chris, see uh, two moms, two dads. Very funny from across the state. Uh, Can't wait. Anything else you want to add? Oh no, man, you guys have been great. Uh, also, Saturday afternoon, I'll okay. be in Jupiter at Roger Dean Stadium for a um, big fundraiser: Heroes and Hot Shots. I'm the guest umpire for a kickball game for charity. Aces, Athletics, Community, and Education. Great organization. Deals with the kids. Guess who will be there. So I'm the guest umpire. I will not be playing kickball. Uh, don't want to pull my hamstring. I'm too competitive because I got a show that night, so I need to be healthy. <laughs> so if you're in North County, South Martin, come out to Jupiter or wherever. Um, We're what everywhere. At, what Jupiter, that is noon. That's at high noon. The game starts at noon. Okay. Big right. event for the kids. Chili, bounce houses, all kind of good stuff. Roger Dean Stadium, Dean's right Stadium. off of 95. Yeah, that's where the, the Marlins do spring training, yes. I think. Um, so come out there, meet Chris, and, and uh, introduce yourself to that organization. Yes. And then our show that night is benefiting three children's organizations, um, Ami Children, which is actually um, an Israel um, uh, program for children in Israel, uh, foster children. Um, incredible program, so you learn more about that at the show. Also, the Unicorn Foundation, which actually um, helps children and um, aid and adults who that are on the spectrum and with uh, learning disabilities. Um, and the third one is Place of Hope, um, which is based here in South County. Um, that's uh, foster um, uh, foster program. <coughs> so awesome! Comedy You're here. That's all we're about. Yep. Comic cure, comic for a cause. You need somebody for your event. There it is. There it is. All right. Man, you guys have been great. Thanks, sir. Ben, it's been awesome. Appreciate it. You're amazing. America, be good. <laughs> Share it. Share this.